half in the bag. Hey, don't you got anything better to do? See the fucking bastard, huh? Susan's dead, everybody's dead, all because of you. Who, me? Yeah, you, there's hundreds of creatures around this goddamn hellhole. All because of you. Do you want to see some blood? First off, take a look at this door. Oh god, what a horrible mess. This is ghastly, brutal. Alright, now yeah, double click the mouse. No, 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 you have to double click. Well, I did, I hit it twice. No, you have to do it fast. Who'd have thought creating an online dating profile would be so difficult? Ugh. Why isn't he helping? Hey, hey, you! Other, fatter, gayer guy, what are you doing? I'm watching a videotape. Uh oh, oh, wait, what? Oh, uh, here we go, there's your online dating profile, let's start setting it up. Oh, good, good. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't been on a date in a real long time now. Hmm. You know, I used to go out with Sharon Stone. Really? Oh, no. I think I was just masturbating to basic instinct. Sometimes my memory gets a little bit fuzzy. Did you say basic instinct? Well, I'll let you start setting up your profile. I'm gonna go get back to work. Oh. oh, hi everyone. Welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. And earlier today we saw a new film called Chronicle. That's right. I don't want to do it. Dude, I don't want to do it. Okay, are you ready? Okay, Come on, yes. do it. Give me a countdown. I will, okay. I promise. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> <Crap. laughs> Chronicle is a film about three high school students who are bestowed with, or rather infected with, whichever way you choose to look at it, a mysterious alien power of telekinesis. The film chronicles the three people as they uh, use and then eventually misuse their new amazing powers. Jay, what did you think of the film? I liked it a lot. I thought it was a really good movie, a really solid movie. Uh, it's sort of bizarre to think in this day and age that a movie can be thought of as a, a breath of fresh air when all it does is tell a story well. This is true, this is true. Um, yeah, it, it told its story well, you know, it wasn't an amazing story. Well, it's, it's had all those elements that we've seen before of, you know, young people getting superpowers, learning to, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. All that stuff, but it was the way it was told. Yeah, well, that, that was the first thing I thought of. Like, I saw the trailer for it, and it did kind of come off like a, an amalgamation of all the different kind of things that are popular now, you know, hip teens and superheroes and... Found footage. Found footage, yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm surprised they didn't put vampires in it. Oh my god, they'll save that for the sequel. They'll have to fight vampires. Yeah, yeah. It was a good movie, and surprisingly for me, it had two other things that, that are like, you know, bad news for me in terms of movies, which is the found footage idea and teens. Sure. Whenever, sure. whenever there's teens in a movie, it always feels like a 48-year-old wrote the dialogue yeah, for them, and then it's yeah. like, no, no, and then found footage, you and I, with, with filmmaking backgrounds, are like, no, they couldn't have put the camera there. They wouldn't actually think to record now. Right. They, they wouldn't be able to get that kind of lighting in the middle of a dark theater. But this movie sort of like, the story took over. Yeah. And, and I, I was able to not really kind of get fixated on that stuff. Which is good for me. I mean, that's that's a monumental achievement. <laughs> well, it's sort of like the exact opposite of like Drive, where Drive is a movie where it kind of works because of the style, mm. uh, because of the way the story is told, because the story is not super complicated. And this is one where the story sort of works in spite of the style, in spite of the, yeah. the found footage approach to it. Are we rolling? I'm gonna get the gum. Pull it right out of his mouth. <laughs> For me, this movie would have been fine as a straight narrative. I, I thought it would have worked better as a more yeah. traditional narrative. And, yeah. and, and in context of the movie, it doesn't make sense because in all other found footage movies, there's a reason 
why someone's shooting, like Blair Witch, you know, obviously they're making a documentary about the Blair Witch and this or that, or um, what's that movie with the, the giant dinosaur in it? Cloverfield. Oh, Cloverfield. <laughs> um, they, they were filming a party or yeah, so, so yeah. there's some sort of context. In this movie, it's like this strange antisocial kid <laughs> and, and he was always scared about getting beat up. Yeah. So the one thing he, he shouldn't be doing is walking around with a gigantic Canon XL1 <laughs> on his shoulder. You know, like yeah, someone, yeah. the bullies are gonna try and knock that out of your hand. You know, and it didn't make sense in the logic of the movie that that kid would want to record stuff. Yeah. It just didn't make there, sense. There was me. some stuff early on where that style, the found footage style, I thought worked to the movie's advantage. Uh, stuff with like when they're first learning to use their powers and they're like throwing rocks and baseballs at each other's heads. And yeah. It's like like jackass it's like or something. Like a YouTube video. Or like a YouTube video, yeah. Oh! <laughs> As the movie went along, it started to get more and more convoluted, like why things were being filmed or yeah. how they were being filmed. Well, they introduced the love interest character for the one guy <laughs> and she had a blog. Yeah. And, and that so necessitated she was filming. her filming everything all the time. Yeah. Even setting the camera up in a doorway when yeah, the guy yeah. showed up unexpectedly. Yeah, like, I, I think the only reason the girl existed is so they could have another camera angle yeah. later on in the yeah. movie. Yeah, and the, yeah, well, and then there's parts where yeah, she's shooting, and then someone else is shooting, so they can do shot reverse shot. Yeah, and then towards the end of the movie, there's all these like camera phones and uh, security cameras, and it's cutting between all that. Well, the worst part was was there was a scene with the the father comes to visit the kid in the hospital. Oh and yeah, and the police yeah. go like, you know, we have to. We have to have a camera on for security purposes or for our investigation. You're like, what? You what? You don't film yeah. someone in the hospital. Yeah. It's like filming someone in the bathroom. Like, that's a violation of <laughs> civil rights. And which, which I d didn't mind. They had a little clever way of getting sort of uh, steady cam stuff and high up angles, and that was. A, the kid was making the camera float around with his mind. Right, right. And that was sort of a that was a cleverer way of. Yeah. of getting camera movements in there. But if you wanted all these camera movements, just Just shoot it like a movie. Or do half and half. Uh, I'd be curious to know if it was written as a found footage thing or if that was sort of something that came up in the, the course of putting the movie together. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not sure, but. Hey, hey guys, what, what's a more romantic term for hand job? Oh, maybe you should just leave that out completely. You, you probably shouldn't use any kind of like sexual terminology in your online dating profile. Yeah, tell them you're looking for love. I'll just say hand love then. Okay, that works. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Oh, that's just so weird. What the hell is this guy's problem? Stop! Are you crazy? Why did you do that? What the hell is wrong with? Was it an accident, Andrew? Andrew? The interesting thing about the story is that while watching the movie, I was kind of thinking it reminded me of the Star Wars prequels and how much better this told a similar kind of story, a similar theme in, in like a mere 83 minutes or however long the movie is. So much better than <laughs> the prequels, which yeah. are like three movies. Yeah, you were more emotionally invested and interested in yeah. what was happening and it, and it showed more of a a downfall into madness. Yeah, so. it starts out as a normal kid, sort of develops this power, learns to harness it, starts to abuse it, lets his emotions take over, like the exact same thing, just yeah. told in a way where you care about things that are happening in the movie. Yeah, yeah. So suck on that, George Lucas. They made this movie for $8. Most movies feel bloated, and this is one where there's a lot of story elements going on, but it's all balanced really well, where it sets up a lot of things yeah. early on, they, they all pay off, uh, the characters have an arc, the story has a natural progression. Um, well, I'll disagree a little bit there. Um, On the, the, what, the yeah, story Yeah, I would say like if this were like a, you know, a track race or sprint guy was running, it just stumbled a little and kept going. There wasn't really like this looming thing that had to happen or get resolved. I don't know, I, when, when that party scene came up, I kept thinking of like Carrie. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like something like, he's like just going to go nuts or something? Yeah, like it was going <laughs> to culminate, and then it sort of like stumbled and backtracked a little. It yeah, was, I, I guess I would agree with that, because I was expecting during that party scene something really bad to happen. I was just right. waiting for it. It almost right. felt like they were setting it up, and then nothing too terrible happened. And then he was like generally mad about things. Yeah, and, and, just... and, you know, and, and, and I like that in a way, because 
it's kind of like how real life would happen. You know, there's not always just like, we've got to fight the bad guy on the roof of this building. Right. And the well, bad and especially for a teenager, it yeah. felt appropriate the Teenagers for that. don't know what they want. Right, right. They don't know who they are yet. They haven't emotionally matured, so they have that angle. Yeah. But which I liked. It was a good depiction of teenagers without being too like precious or, or sappy or anything. I'm worried about Andrew. Listen to me. We can't screw Wait, around with this. It's this too dangerous. Andrew, it's what? not a what? game. Andrew! Stop this right now! I noticed that the, the alien device that got buried in the ground looked very similar to the um, the, the crystal space pod that they launched Superman as a baby in, mm -hmm. in Superman, the motion picture. Hmm. You know, when they launch them out of, out of uh, Krypton when it's exploding, and it's like, do, 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 and they yeah. shoot the baby, and then he's listening to um, Marlon Brando in the thing, and it's like, blah, 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 and he's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> Um, and, and, and it looked almost exactly like that. Hmm. Um, and, and I think that was sort of a nod. To Superman. Superman, and... like that's, these guys are gonna get superhuman strength and yeah. ability. Um, perhaps look that up. I will. Perhaps do a comparison here. Right here, to see if how, how right I am. There's nothing there. No, 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 that's for graphics later. No, the graphics aren't there. Oh, you didn't look it up? I must have forgot to look it up when I was editing the episode. Watch this. Dude! Holy crap! <laughs> she thinks it's stolen. She has no she idea. Stolen. Yes, it was the black guy this time. <laughs> okay, now it's, it's time to upload my picture. Oh my god! Is that the best picture that you have? You should probably use a more flattering picture for your profile. I guess it's a good idea. Yeah. Alright, alright. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Okay. So this is apparently kind of the, the little movie that could, in that it's like a low budget thing, that it's sort of slowly been rolled out, sort of word of mouth is spread. It's been out for a few weeks now, and we just saw it. It's um, very similar to um, Skyline, which is the little movie that couldn't. It's sort of the exact opposite of Skyline, a little low budget thing that looks like a bigger movie, and then comes out and is, is a piece of garbage. This is the exact did opposite of that. Did you even see Skyline? I did see Skyline, oh, it was, and it's, it's a piece it, of it, shit. It was one of those movies where it feels like they filmed everything and then later on added everything. I had that thought with um, Transformers 3, Chicago, and then everywhere there's smoke plumes and glass broken. picture like computer layers going adding in all these different effects over and over on top yeah. of each other and it all just feels like yeah it's well not it's it's not much different than the no budget movies where people just put in those those uh plug in like muzzle flares yeah. and yeah Sometimes just drop everything even... in afterwards well chronicle obviously a lot of the effects were done later and um and the fact that it is a low budget thing sort of is in the back of your mind yeah. the whole time well, what's interesting is a lot of the like the the flying effects and things like that. I thought were more convincing than like the X Men First Class movie. Yeah. <laughs> How does that happen? As good or better? Yeah, I thought they were parts. better. I thought they were more convincing when they're flying around. Yeah, yeah. What is that? I right, knew we're going inside. Steve, wait up! Matt, look at this! Holy! It's worth giving your money to, I guess, a low-budget movie that is trying to to tell a story with characters and it's, entertain it's, you. It's well worth giving your money to any movie that's trying to just tell a story at this point. Yeah. So on to Ghost Rider, <laughs> Spirit of Vengeance. <sighs> well, I'm done. Nothing to do now, but wait for the flood of emails to come in. You're just gonna sit there this whole time and wait? Sure, why not? What else am I gonna do? Oh, Mr. Plinkett, it, it might take a while. And by a while, I mean never. I got a few minutes. You'll take on a new form. 
one more powerful thing than he's ever known. It's the early months of the year, and we all know what that means, of course. It's time for another crappy Nick Cage movie. Yes. This year, it's Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Ghost Rider, Vengeance of Spirits is the sequel that nobody asked for to the movie that nobody saw, and it tells the story of Terminator 2, but stupider. Cage, as the Ghost Rider, must protect the fate of a little boy who is being groomed to take on the throne of Satan. Or something. What did you think of Ghost Rider? Spent vengeance of spirits. Spent money on vengeance? <laughs> uh, Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider? Or Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider had a Ghost Rider? Yes. Um, Ghost Rider, Vengeance of Spirits. I, you know, I liked it. <laughs> I, oh no! I, you know, I didn't mind it. I, I, have, I have to say, the first like 30 minutes I wanted to sleep. Yeah, I didn't hate it. Like, this is the kind of movie where it's hard to hate. Like, it's stupid, but it's trashy and it kind of knows it. Um, it's not good, but there's a lot of like really negative, you know, critical reactions to it. And to me, it's just like, whatever. Um, but yeah, I was bored during the first like half hour of the movie. Well, I will say before everyone starts getting on our cases about like <laughs> the, the, the legacy of Ghost Rider and the comic books and all that stuff, I don't know a flying shit fuck about Ghost Rider. Well, what I thought was interesting, because Ghost Rider, I think, is sort of like a B character in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Like he was created, I think, in the 70s, like around the time that Evil Knievel was getting popular. Okay. Um, but I thought it was interesting, the opening logo for this movie, you know, all the Marvel movies have the, the Marvel Studios logo. This one, it was called like Marvel Knights. It wasn't the regular Marvel logo. I was like, they created a, a, a B category for their, their film unit to release their crap B movies that aren't, you know, the Hulk or yeah. like Thor. <laughs> well, yeah, Ghost, Ghost Rider falls into that category of like superheroes in movies that are like completely unmarketable. Yeah. Like the Hulk. And it's, it's something everyone has heard of. Everyone's heard of the Hulk, everyone's heard of Ghost Rider, everyone's heard of the Punisher, but for some reason those movies don't ever work. No. And, and I don't know why. I, it, and movies like Superman, Spider-Man, Batman always seem to work. No. They're the more popular comic book characters, and the lesser ones, it's hard to get behind it, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Um, so, I don't know a lick about Ghost Rider, I don't care, but the film, I didn't see the first one, but the film sets up well enough in that little comic book uh, animation montage. Oh yeah, the opening. And I'm like, thing. okay, got it. Like, I'm like, are they gonna explain to me what the fuck Ghost Rider is when I was watching it? And um, and they did. The Ghost Rider looked great. Yeah, I, I liked the look of it. I liked the, the, the sort of charts. Cause I've seen, I, I haven't seen the first movie either, but um, from what I have seen, the bits I have seen, the skull is sort of like like just a white skull with flames around it. I like that this one, it was like charred. Mm -hmm. like, like it looked good. Like the they costume weren't too was cheesy. Um, top notch looking animation. I, I thought it was really neat looking yeah, actually. Cool. And when he's riding on the motorcycle, it's like, hey, you know, Ghost Rider is on the screen. And yeah. I was happy with that. This child is in danger. Daddy! I don't say people. If you don't help, the devil will have a new form, one more powerful than he's ever known. The only interest I had in the movie is the fact that it was directed by the guys who did the Crank movies, and I think those movies are, are kind of brilliant in their own way. Mm, not uh, in their own way. They're, they're very, very self-aware of what they're doing, and they're very over the top and very ridiculous to the point where every scene you're like, I can't believe this is in a mainstream action movie. Like a guy's cutting off his nipples now, or, yeah. or a girl's getting shot in her breast implants and they're leaking everywhere. Like just the most bizarre, insane stuff. Crank 1 and its sequel, which is called Crank 2 High Voltage, yes. are yes. two of the greatest films ever made. They are wonderful, especially Crank 2. I yeah. really love Crank 2. So when I found out that those guys were doing Ghost Rider, I was like, all right, it's a goofy premise. It's got a goofy actor in the lead. And it's got these guys who may be insane, you know, directing it. And the problem is that most of the movie is just really sort of dull mm. and, and run of the mill. There's a few flourishes. And unfortunately the first one doesn't happen until like 30 minutes into the movie. That time he turns into Ghost Rider is amazing. It's like spliced in from another movie. <laughs> I wish 
the movie had more bizarro shit like that. Yeah, well, I can tell you exactly what happened was, you know, some producer had the money or the script for a second Ghost Rider movie, and they said, let's get these guys that made Crank. Yeah. Because it's a similar kind of concept. There's a guy who's got a problem and is in a hurry and has some sort of craziness about him. Those guys will be great to direct it. But <laughs> it's got to be rated PG-13. It's got to be rated PG-13, and here's our script. Yeah. And the crank guys are like, well, we're used to doing our own thing. And they, yeah, they didn't write this. And they've written their other, they wrote the crank movies. Right, so. and they're like, we're used to horrible swear words, hookers, sex, you know, exploding helicopters, whatever. And, and Gleeful like, racism. So, <laughs> gleeful racism. But if it was a situation where it's like, Here's a giant check. Yeah. Then, then yeah. maybe it's like, oh, okay. Or they want to do bigger movies, bigger yeah. budgeted movies, something like that. But I could see why they picked the Crank Guys, and we could have this all wrong. The Crank Guys might have sought out trying to do the sequel to Ghost Rider. I don't <laughs> it's know. It's their lifelong dream, it, dream yes, to make the sequel to Ghost the Ghost Rider. They love the Ghost Rider comic book. <laughs> but it, it seems like, like a logical pairing of, yeah. of some you know studio person thinking that they would be right for this type of material. Problem is, it's a kind of a, a traditional script. Yeah. Traditional compared to the Crank movies. Mm, that's, um, that's pretty much and, any and, movie. And, yeah. <laughs> and there's lots of scenes in the movie where it's like, we have to have our conversation driving to the next location. So that's that that's could... the, the biggest problem is that the middle of the movie is just like driving. There's so much driving. When it is action, like I thought the, there's, a, there's an action scene at the end of the movie. It's a long uh, sort of car chase sequence. I thought that was really well done. And uh, I, I thought it would have been really kick ass if I had given a shit at that point in the movie, but I had already given up on it. I appreciate the way they shoot action, like on a, a technical standpoint, like they do a lot of their own handheld camera work, like them personally. Uh, they strap on roller blades and they'll like ride along with cars and film that way. They have a very sort of frantic camera style, lots of quick cutting, but you still sort of understand the geography of everything and um, really well done, but that was like the only big exciting action scene in the whole movie. Yeah, the other scenes are fine. They didn't have a lot of consequence to them. The ending did, you know, cause it's like, I don't really like kids, but you know, the kid like Nicolas Cage, and there's like a minor, minor subplot with Nick Cage and his father. He wanted to save his father, and so he sees a little kid, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna try and be a father. It's very T2. Yeah. Um, so it's like, oh, okay, I kind of care about these two characters, the mother <laughs> and the son, and the fact that the son is being groomed to take over the body of the devil, and you know, there's that one line that really kind of re-perked my interest in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I noticed you laughing heavily. Oh, and... yeah, the, the, the mother's like, he's, it, it, it sets up to be like this emotional scene. She's like, he's a good boy. And... Danny's the one good thing I ever did. That being the case, we better make sure he doesn't turn out to be the Antichrist. <laughs> but he says it completely yeah. straight. And it's yeah. like, and then it, the scene just ends and it's like, I'm like, brilliant! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the, then, the movie could have used more of that. Yeah, more schlock. Yeah. And then, and then they end up at a devil worshiping ceremony at the end. And, yeah. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> I like this. Okay. I didn't mind it, no. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it was like, there wasn't enough schlock for me to appreciate from the guys who made Crank. There wasn't enough Nicolas Cage scenery chewing. There was only like one or two. Yeah. There's a couple moments where you're like, why does he say things the way he says them? And it's amazing, but there wasn't that much of that. There was kind of a few scenes early on and the rest he just seems kind of bored. Yeah, it's but weird. by the ending, the ending's badass and that makes you forget the rest of the movie to the point where I, th I, I was thinking during it, like this is a movie for 13 year old boys. Like they'll love this movie. And as I was walking out to the parking lot after the movie got out, there's a 13 year old kid, a doofy looking kid on his cell phone that had just left the theater. He's talking to his friend and he says, dude, Ghost Rider was awesome. I was like, well, there you go. It has its audience. It has its audience and it's, it's stupid, but it's not offensively stupid. The Rider's going to come out. He'll destroy the first guy coming. I'm not afraid of you. With Ghost Rider, the, the, the 
the antithesis or the polar opposite of what's your number is Ghost as, Rider. As far as the, like guilty pleasure is movies Ghost Rider go, a mile, if if Jillian Bellinger were right here, would would she tell me that Ghost Rider it was terrible and insulting and stupid and you know, or am I right in saying it's an okay guilty pleasure? Because hmm. I I find it a guilty pleasure. Yeah, it's it's not a great movie, right? Um, and it's a movie about a ghost rider, a guy <laughs> with a, with a curse, uh, where a demon takes over his body and yeah, and and starts. Well, with that you up. start with an inherently silly premise, you know, mm. and, and you sort of play up to that. With something like What's Your Number, where the point is to make a a, a light romantic comedy about people making a connection, yeah. like, and, and no one acts like human beings. You're supposed to have like people as the main characters, and they're not people. They're they're weirdo aliens. Yeah. Would you say the characters, the way that people acted in Ghost Rider, was more realistic? Because I would. And more realistic in the context of what the movie is, sure. I believe that mother feared that her son would turn into the Antichrist. What if you have to pee while you're on fire? Oh, it's awesome. So I think seeing this has made me want to see Ghost Rider 1. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, well that's the doorbell. Right as rain if I ain't ever heard one. Wow, this internet dating stuff sure works fast. Wait, you already got a date? Your profile's only been up for like an hour. What can I say? The chicks dig me. Now can you get the door for me? I don't walk too well and I smell like human waste. I can't wait to see this old hag. <sighs> Female version of Plinkett. Sad. Old, lonely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Is this the post office? Oh. Well, now I feel like an asshole. How the hell did I get here? The fuck was that? Hello. I'm looking for Mr. Harry A.S. Plankett. Why, that'd be me, honey pie. I'm glad you could make it here so quick. I'm certainly excited to see you. <laughs> well, are you ready for our date, sugar? Sure thing. Let me just grab my walker. Uh -huh. Oh, that's oh, no. oh. 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 This year's my night on the town walk. Mm. It's clean. <laughs> well, that's too bad, because I kind of like it dirty. Oh, my. <laughs> Come on, honey. We got to get to the dollar store. I need to pick up condoms. Oh. Very nice. I don't think we'll be needing those. Well, hello. Is that one of those old VCRs? <laughs> well, I haven't seen one of those since before I was born. <laughs> You should really consider getting one of those DVD players. Okay. 